We move now into the section of resiliency and community supports, what we refer to as our life enrichment services. Next slide. Next slide. And just mentioning uh, obviously that our life enrichment services intends to more directly address the service needs of Oakland families um, across the divisions that are listed here, our human services department, our Oakland animal services, our Oakland parks recreation and youth development department, and of course our Oakland public libraries. Next slide. And across our community centers, we have an array of services and, and facilities that support um, the city's uh, delivery to our residents. A total of 60 facilities across the center, and that would include 25 recreation centers, 18 libraries, 18, excuse me, 12 Head Start centers, four senior centers, and of course, our animal shelter, which performs an incredible amount of service supporting all activities citywide. Next slide. And of course, these community centers are focused on providing a breadth, the breadth of service across the city. Uh, focus on some specific objectives in terms of economies of scale, utilizing spaces that are uh, multi-purpose um, in, in the nature of how they perform and deliver services to our residents so that there's shared maintenance and flexible usage and funding opportunities that can be channeled into the support of those facilities. Focused on whole family services, again, uh, joint use community centers such that um, generations, multi-generational use can benefit from the use of these locations. There's the multi-generational, multicultural aspects um, in terms of binding the community across the number of wonderful ethnicities and cultures that we have here in our city so that they may experience whole life experiences as they use these locations. And then of course, resiliency hubs, the ability to utilize these locations for emergency preparedness and response uh, according to the needs that are expressed when we encounter those crisis moments as we operate across the city, um, using them as an opportunity to maximize partnerships and collaborations, um, supported by, of course, friends of organizations who deliver direct investments into many of these facilities to ensure that they can maintain operations according to specific capital needs, and of course, making them available to the public. Um, and then the opportunity to maximize the functionality of these locations with capital investments from Measure KK and potentially Measure Q as we look to the allocation of dollars uh, to support the operations of these very vital supports to our community. Next slide, please. And of course, leading with our human services department, and I believe our director may be here, would give her the opportunity to add comments, just recognizing though still that the day has been long for the many members that have participated in this very important session. Um, the Senior Companion and Foster Grandparent Program enlists community volunteers to support seniors and encourages seniors to mentor young children with both populations working towards independence and success. The Head Start Program serves 674 children zero to five years of age and expected parents. I um, want to thank the Council of Past and anticipate the support of the Council present and being able to support the operation of our Head Start Centers. Um, and of course, our community homelessness services manages community cabin sites, as well as uh, linkages to Alameda County for specific services when we are dealing with our unhoused community and uh, an essential support, obviously, to the encampment management team as we look to address health and safety issues across our city. Next slide, please. And of course, our animal services uh, department um, delivers outreach clinics and provides free exams for over a thousand pets, um, as well as vaccinations, microchipping, pet tags, and pet food and supplies. Um, I wanna acknowledge, that, of course, our animal services has done an incredible amount of work with respect to uh, engaging our residents into the adoption of pets when we see changes in the uptick and the public's ability to maintain their ability to keep their animals. Um, they've done a tremendous amount of work uh, making sure that the health and safety of those animals as we find them and as we hold them are, are such that the public can enjoy the opportunity to um, foster an animal and bring a, a, a pet into the family. Um, focusing primarily on pet guardianships who are experiencing homelessness. This has been a real big issue in terms of making sure that um, those pets uh, do not suffer harm 
are able to be maintained and, and cared for um, and have options in terms of their ability to have places to go even temporarily as our members, uh, our unhoused members may be in transition and are looking to make sure that their pets are well maintained and cared for until such time that they can arrive at more stable positions. Um, next slide, please. Our Oakland Parks Recreation and Youth Development Department, of course, um, features 23 recreation centers. And this is information that you heard earlier, um, offering youth garden plots, incorporating produce grown into healthy eating and cooking programs. I think the department has covered this detail um, already in its earlier presentations, but of course we recognize that they're a very important part of our resiliency up and our life enrichment services uh, segment. Next slide, please. And then I believe we just heard from our public libraries, um, but just wanted to highlight that the o Oakland Public Library System offers um, bike fix-it clinics. And that support has been tremendous in terms of the bike community. Um, and those particularly who may have issues with the ability to maintain the repair over their bikes, it's been very important to our community to be able to borrow tools um, from the lending library to be able to maintain um, their bikes and soften the impacts to transit with using bikes. Next slide, please. And of course, in terms of the pandemic response, the city partnered with the World Central Kitchens. And actually, I would pause here and ask if Joe DeVries is on. I think he does this presentation far better than I do, and he's done a tremendous amount of work with World Central Kitchens. Joe, are you on? I am. Thank, thank you so much, Assistant City Administrator Simmons. Uh, there this, you go. That, that's my cue. You know, we wanted to just uh, tie it together with a couple of your perspective for the council because of what everyone's been through. Uh, talk about our pandemic response, recovery, and then resilience, and then we'll be done. Um, it was it was really a, um, uh, an honor to get to serve in the um, emergency operations center when the pandemic kicked off, and we quickly. Um, partnered with World Central Kitchen and utilized our rec centers and our libraries uh, and, and our staff to develop, to, to, to provide 3.1 million meals. Um, I have to give my thanks to, to the Curry family as well because they seeded some of this, but we ultimately got FEMA to reimburse a lot of it. Um, but it was it's an example of where our very human service focused uh, staff from the libraries, from parks and human services, became disaster service workers and got trained on that. And then we had the double emergency in 2020 of the wildfires, where we quickly switched to opening city libraries as respite centers. And as I mentioned earlier this morning, uh, we're continuing that effort by installing uh, more air filtration systems to see that we can continue to do that because we will see more wildfires in the future. Uh, and you know, as we recover, um, you know, we want to build these communities out. As, as I know, the library director mentioned the aging infrastructure that she's dealing with, and same with our, our, our parks and rec director. You know, we really want to strengthen these, these facilities and the services they provide and the access to them by the surrounding community in our frontline neighborhoods. And that, that really comes out of our pandemic response. Uh, next slide, please. And I wanted to point out in regard to pandemic recovery, uh, this map really says it all in that, you know, the, the, the pandemic is not over uh, in many of our communities. One in four residents face food insecurity. One in 10 face deep food insecurity, meaning they frequently must skip meals altogether. And the concentration of that is overwhelmingly located in Oakland's frontline communities as this map depicts. And you'll find that if you overlay this map with a map of life expectancy in Alameda County, uh, those same red areas have the lowest life expectancy, the highest asthma rates, the highest diabetes rates, uh, rates of diabetes. And so that's why it's so important that we concentrate our effort as we recover from the pandemic in these neighborhoods, uh, which we are doing. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and it's just to close from recovery uh, is really to resilience. We wanna make it um, so that the ongoing daily stresses uh, that people experience that were highlighted by the by the pandemic 
um, are we continue to strengthen people and communities to deal with. And so we entered a unique partnership with Alameda County to build a food hub at Oreo Viejo Rec Center. Of course, we're expanding the summer food program, as we mentioned earlier. We're developing a, 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 a resilience hub at the Lincoln Rec Center. Um, we're also looking at using other rec centers and senior centers for other food recovery efforts, including the West Oakland Senior Center, which will soon have a food recovery op operation going on. We've also I mentioned the air filters. We're going to continue to use CIP dollars to upgrade these facilities to be all electric uh, with solar panels and backup batteries. Uh, so that they can operate during a shock to the system. But it's also really important on a week-to-week -week basis that they help us with the stresses of, uh, uh, that, that our neighborhoods feel. Um, as we've engaged East Oakland neighborhoods in particular around the concept of the City Hall East, which is something the council directed us to do, we're hearing more and more about access to public gathering places, places where people can find out about jobs, can sit down at a computer that they don't have at home. Uh, and and that's, that's the sort of work we're doing at these facilities to see that they, they serve as community centers every day, and then they serve as that emergency center when there's that big shock to the system. And that, I believe, is it. Thank you.